not too long ago here on the channel, sort of in honor of the most recent and hopefully last Rambo movie, we took a look at the $8 Harbor Freight hollow handle survival knife. And that video generated a lot of interest and a lot of comments. It also brought up a few issues with that knife that just kind of leave it a little bit short for what I would consider a good survival knife. So what I thought we'd do in this video is take a look at another hollow handle survival knife. This one from the folks at Cold Steel, talking about the survival edge. And we've got the orange handle here, and we've also got a black handle version. That's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name is Brian. Thanks for joining me. So, as I said a couple of weeks ago, I did a review sort of in honor of the most recent and hopefully last Rambo movie about the Harbor Freight $8 hollow handled survival knife. And I call it a Rambo knife because in the, at least in the first movie, First Blood, um, that's the kind of knife that, that Rambo used was a hollow handled survival knife with a compass in the handle and really big, wicked, cool looking knife. I'm going to go out on a limb and say the one he used probably wasn't an $8 knife, but either way, uh, we did a, a sort of a standard test on it and it, it actually surprised me and held up okay but there were some shortcomings that really just didn't they did not give me enough confidence in that thing to count on it as my personal knife but i do like the concept of a hollow handle knife with, the, with you can put some survival stuff in the, in the handle because the one thing that i'm going to hang on to in, in any kind of an outdoor situation is going to be my knife and it's something that's going to be strapped on your waist or whatever. So to be on your person, you can always at least have a knife and some survival stuff on your person, which I think is a really good good idea. But that one just that that wouldn't be my first choice. We'll just say it that way. So anyway, I decided to uh, check out another hollow handle survival knife from the folks at Cold Steel, and this one is the hollow, the call uh, obviously the the survival edge, like I said. And you can see a, a major difference. This one has a polypropylene handle. But but one of the other things I really want to talk about is the number one critique I got, if you want to call it that, in a multiple multiple comments on the Harbor Freight knife, was because that knife was really dull. It wouldn't carve feathers for for flip. It was just it wasn't sharp at all. And I had a lot a lot a lot of people. Um, pretty much castigate me because I should know better than to try to review a knife that didn't have an edge on it. So anyway, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the specs and all that stuff with this knife right after this word from one of our sponsors. This video is sponsored by my friends at clickbelts.com where you can save 15% by using the coupon code SOP15 at checkout. Click belts feature genuine Cobra buckles. They have a full lifetime warranty and they are sewn right here in the USA in the great state of Texas. And they have some of the best customer service I've ever seen. They've even got the really cool TSA friendly poly cobra buckle now. So if you're looking for a very, very strong, very cool belt, I encourage you to check out the folks at clickbelts.com. Don't forget, use the coupon code SOP15 to save 15%. Okay, we are back. So without any more rambling, let me just take you down to the old stump top. We'll talk about the specs of this knife. We'll take a look at the details and then we'll get to doing some of that survival knife stuff. Okay, so the squirrels have been having a I guess this is the, the squirrel's dinner table here. They've been eating the pine cones. But, so here's these, the two different versions of the survival edge knife. So we've got an orange handle version and a black handle version. And here's the sheath. Uh, the only difference, as you can see, is the color. So let's talk about these things. First of all, I'll give you the details. Let me get a little close up here. This thing features a 5-inch clip point blade of sub-zero cryo-quenched German 4116 stainless steel. It is 2.5 millimeters thick, features a four and one quarter inch hollow handle of polypropylene with an integrated double quillion guard here, which also has some lashing points. So this only, not only protects your fingers, but you can also use it to uh, lash it to make a spear. And it has a waterproof cap on the end with a hollow cavity inside. This has got some survival tools in it. Also has a compass in the, in, the, in the cap. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. And then I want to look at the uh, sheath real quickly. It features the uh, Cold Steel Secure X sheath, which is pretty nice. You see this thing just snaps in very well. And it's, it's really very good retention. you got to pull it to get it out of there, but you can get it out. And it also holds the, the quillion guard, holds the uh, ferro rod in, which comes with a ferro rod. A little short um, kind of emergency ferro rod there. So there's that, and it snaps in really well. And then the sheath is ambidextrous, so you can turn this thing either way. Uh, 
whether you're left or right-handed and it has just a kind of a clip on here with a little little notch there to catch your belt so kind of really similar to to the way a mora she's a, a traditional more sheath works as far as the, the retention there so there's that oh and, and the, the weight of this thing for just a knife only is 2.8 ounces uh, with the knife and the sheath and the ferro rod and the kit and everything in it it weighs 5.6 ounces on my scale lastly at least at the time of this video the price of this knife um, with the sheath with the survival kit with everything it's between 26 and 27 bucks on Amazon depending on which color and you know which which vendor you get it from and then there's also a, a, a single link that has the uh, the knife with the sheath and the ferro rod but no survival kit for just 20 bucks so you can put your own kit or whatever you want in there so let's just take a quick look at some of these things here uh, first of all the uh, the edge looks very almost like a scandy ground edge very similar to to what I would think of I think there's this uh, blade shape looks an awful lot like a Mora blade shape, very standard bushcrafty style blade shape. It's got some little rubber rings that are, that are I guess they're glued in here, fastened in here to give you a good grip. The grip feels really good on it. It's got a little bit of jimping like here and here. It's kind of, you know, where you can, if, if, depending on what kind of grip you're doing, a reverse grip or whatever, it kind of gives you a little traction. Let's open her up and see what is in the... Uh, it's in the old survival kit here. So it's a water, waterproof cap. It's got like a, almost looks like a, uh, you know, soda cap. Then it has a little compass here that actually fits right in that little slot there. So if you want to leave it in the cap like Rambo did, you can do that. There it is. And let's just kind of take a look at this thing and see how, how accurate it is. So it's pretty stinking close because that's about the way north is. North is about that way. Let me, I got, I got my uh, Casio Pro Track watch here with a compass on it. Let's just see how well that compares because this thing, I know this thing is right. There's north right there, and there's north right there. So looks like it's right on to me. Got the compass, then we have inside. Let's just see what kind of stuff is in here. Looks like a pretty decent kit. I like the size of this handle. Also, there's a, uh, oh, okay, there's some brass wire in here. Pretty good bit of wire. Don't know how much. Uh, let's see if it tells you how much on the package. It just says brass wire, but it looks like a pretty good bit if you need to make snares or whatever. Kind of looks like a slinky, doesn't it? Okay, and then there's 60 feet of monofilament fishing line. And I like this. They went a little extra, and it's on a little kind of like a metal spool winding thing in there. So it's not just a wad of line like you often see in these um, survival kits. That is pretty cool. That really helps you keep things neat and organized, and you don't have just a, you won't you won't spend 45 minutes trying to un untangle the fishing line. I think that's a good idea. Uh, a whistle. Let's see. Not bad. A little aluminum whistle. You know I like whistles for survival kits. There are two safety pins, six fish hooks, six lead sinkers, which are nice to have. A little sewing kit, and then finally another really cool addition, a little small ceramic sharpening rod. So um, I think that is, to my in my mind, that is a really nice little survival kit. Much better than the one in the $8 Harbor Freight kit. Although this kit probably was, you know, would, would be close to worth $8. So I'll put all that back in the uh, hollow handle. And then we'll get to doing some of that knife stuff. Before we do that, I just want to take a look inside the handle. I don't know if you can see in there. So this thing is not a full tang. It is molded, injection molded onto the blade. And the tang goes to about, can you see in there? You see the little little ridge there? It's like the tang goes to about this, this far. So about there. So at the end of my thumb is about where the tang ends. So not very much tang there, but it is molded on polypropylene. So... Um, we'll just see how it works. Let me back you up a little bit where we can, uh, you can get a, a little, little better um, angle on the stump top here to do some of the knife stuff now. Okay, so the first thing I thought we'd do since the number one complaint I got about my testing process was that you need to sharpen the knife first is uh, before we do any batoning or anything else, I just want to see how sharp this thing is straight out of the box because I'm telling you it feels stinking sharp. So let's try this first. Let's try the old hairy arm test first because I always like to do that and <laughs> okay there's that so for all the people that were just just said obviously only an idiot wouldn't wouldn't know that they need to sharpen a knife first before they do a review the straight out of the box no sharpening it shaved my arm so there okay anyway let's uh I got I got this piece of whatever this is but it's stinking solid um and I cut it with my silky saw you're not going to find that in the woods, I know, but I'm just trying to do a test of this knife, so 
And honestly, one of the reasons I bought the second knife, I bought this one first, is because I wanted to do this review. And I was concerned that if I broke this during batoning, I wouldn't be able to finish the review. So hopefully it won't break, but let's just see. This is some hard wood. It's got some knots in it. We're going to go through the knots. We're going to do this thing just like we normally would. And this is about as big as I would want a baton with this style of knife anyway. And again, the only reason I'm going to be batoning this wood mostly is for crafts, for making stuff. If I just need to get to the center for some dry wood to start a fire, um, if I can't find any other way, it's not going to be my first choice of things to do. So anyway, let's just do it and see. I got a lot of confidence in cold steel, so let's just see what happens. It did just fine, and there's no play in there, no no gaps in, in the plastic where it moved it or anything else. So let's let's split it one more time. We'll just try to do that kind of a one stick fire thing with it. How about that? We'll see how it works. That seems like a, a good. That's kind of like my standard test, honestly. It's just that kind of one stick fire thing. Just split it down, carve some feathers, and then just see what happens. So there is that. Let's try some some feathers now because the uh, other survival knife. Didn't do real good on the feathers, so let's see what happens here. Oh yeah, that's going to work great. Let me give you a little close-up on that. Like butter. But man, it is, look at that, just look at that. It is carving like, <laughs> so sharp. This thing is so sharp. Okay, that is pretty impressive. I'm telling you, this thing is stinking sharp. But the spine is not, so let's see if this little ferro rod here, is, now it actually shows on the back of the blister pack, striking the, uh, or maybe it's on their website, but anyway, it shows striking the ferro rod with the spine. So we're going to see if that'll work. I don't think it will. I don't think this thing has got a sharp enough spine to do it. Maybe on the very end of it. And by the way, just give you a quick, quick look at that grind. Look how even that grind is there. By golly, they got it right. Um, certainly that could be touched up with a file, but I'm going to keep messing with it. See if I can get some sparks off of it up here so we can't do it up there let's see if we can get it here okay so that part works but the very end up here but it's kind of hard to get leverage there and i know there's going to be somebody that says i always get these comments that i'm doing it wrong i'm supposed to pull the ferro rod like that and well you know what that's great you do it your way i'll do it mine i've always been able to get a fire going like this And, look at there. Come on, baby, burn, 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 baby, burn. Be nice, be gentle to it. Yes, 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 look, look, looky, looky. Whoa, baby. Okay, well, I gotta tell you, so far, I am really, really, really impressed with this knife. I, um, I was a little concerned about the batoning, but it, it was solid as a rock. Now, you're not chopping down trees with this. I'm not going to split the winter's firewood with it, but it's just for a, from a survival knife standpoint, for doing light batoning, whether you're trying to make a trap, you know, car, car craft type stuff to make traps or whatever, or just trying to get into to some dry firewood, you know, whether you're trying to baton small saplings down to get them going so you can build your shelter. It, it's a, it's, it seemed to do very, very well. Obviously, we only batoned a few things, but um, no no looseness no wear no nothing that seemed just nothing nothing went wrong and this thing is by golly sharp 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 straight out of the box straight out of the box okay and the spine is not really sharp but it looks like it's it's, it's almost like it's starting to get a little sharper just for me trying to use it so um i think maybe just a little maybe a little a little bit of file there obviously would fix that so that's a bunch of practical stuff and from that standpoint the thing is great i think the survival kit is good I'm really impressed with that, but as you know, here at Survival on Purpose, 
worldwide headquarters, we maintain a state-of-the-art cutting-edge knife testing facility and no test is complete of a fixed blade knife until we put it through at least the uh, one of our most important testing stages is the balance orientation and rotation device. We've got to check the balance of this thing. So it's kind of lightweight, blade heavy. So we're going to see. Um, not a full tang. I usually don't like to balance check non-full tang knives, but we're going to give this one the full test and see what happens. So let's do it. <laughs> one more time. Okay, that wasn't, that wasn't straight. That was kind of like a hanging chad. Let's give it one more. Oh, no. If you saw the other video of the Harbor Freight Knife, you know that I broke one of these ears off hitting it wrong the first time. And I didn't even know it until somebody told me in the comments. But so far, so good. <laughs> okay, we're going to recall that one balanced. Okay, so as I said, we're going to call this one balanced. And I got to say, um, in my opinion, if you're looking for a hollow handle survival knife, and I think it's, a, again, I think that's a really good concept for a knife. If you had to choose between this one or, or this one and the $8 Harbor Freight knife, granted, this one's about three and a half times as expensive as the Harbor Freight knife. Although some people told me theirs was 10. So we'll just call it three times the money, right? Um, in my opinion, this is definitely way more than three times better. First of all, it's sharp. You can cut stuff with it. You don't have to sharpen it and put it on a grinder or anything else. Second of all, uh, this is German 4116 steel. Pretty sure this is better steel than, than the Harbor Freight one. The Harbor Freight one, by the way, is made in China. This one is made in Taiwan. Typically, the Taiwan quality control is a little better. I think the steel may be a little better. I know. Um, from straight knives, the Taiwan ones seem to be better. Um, and then the survival kit, in my opinion, is much better in this one. Uh, it has a whistle. It has a ceramic sharpening rod, which is really good. And this one has a ferro rod with it, which is also really good. So I, mean, I just think the, uh, in my opinion, this one may not look as cool because it doesn't have all those, it's not a big, long, fancy blade and it doesn't have all those little sawback stuff and it's not brass, big brass handle. But from a functionality standpoint, I would highly suggest this. As a matter of fact, um, I'm thinking about doing like a recommended um, tools or, or section and maybe maybe reviving the Amazon store um, and this will definitely be in there. Uh, but until then, there'll be links to this in the video description below. If you're looking for a really good $30 knife that, that, that could be a great tool to throw in your bug out bag or your survival kit or whatever, just give you a Give you a little extra edge um, if something went wrong you needed to survive. I think this could be a really good choice. So that's the Cold Steel Survival Edge. Oh, by the way, if you missed the Harbor Freight video, um, stick around in a few more seconds and that'll pop up on the screen, probably like right up here somewhere. As always, thanks for watching Survival on Purpose. I put out a brand new video every Friday and Saturday and sometimes random videos throughout the week. If you haven't subscribed, you can fix that by clicking right down here. Be sure and click that little notification bell that pops up. So maybe, possibly, YouTube will notify you when I, I put out a new video. If you want to make sure you don't miss a single video, I invite you to subscribe to my weekly newsletter where every Sunday I'll send you an email with all the previous week's videos, plus any news or offers I think you might be interested in. You can go to survivalonpurpose.com forward slash subscribe, or just click the little box with a knife in it down there. That'll take you there too. So I really appreciate all the support. Once again, my name is Brian. You're watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival is not an accident. So be prepared. I'll see you next time. <laughs>